In this video, we're going to look at pagination in Stripe where you can load more products from your Stripe account. We can also implement infinite scrolling. So as a user is scrolling, more products are fetched automatically. We'll also look at the new Stripe search API where you can pass in any query to show relevant results all natively in Stripe without needing to install or sync your data with a third party package. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hamid. I'm a full stack JavaScript developer. And here on this channel, we mainly talk about modern web dev topics like React and Next.js. So let's get into this. We're going to build this on top of a project we have previously done on the channel about using a Stripe API in Next.js. If you haven't watched that video, I'll include the link in the cart. I've also included a link to the source code down in the description so you can follow along. Basically, all we were doing in that project on our homepage inside our get server side props function we were using this Stripe client to list all the active prices in our account. Now I've limited the response to two so that we can use this load more button to fetch the next round or the next page of our prices. Now let's see how this works. This load more button is hooked to this load more function that fires on click. And all this load more function does is that it hits our own API endpoint that we're going to look at in a second and passes a starting after ID so that the next round of products fetch is going to be products or prices after this last one that we had. To understand this better, we have to inspect what is returned from this uh, initial call that we have, this prices object that we are currently destructuring in our component. As you can see up there, I'm destructuring prices out of it. Inside of it, there is data. And there's also this has more property. To make it easy when working with the Stripe API, I recommend using the Stripe Postman collection, uh, where you can just send API requests to um, the Stripe API and, and see the responses right in your Postman. So let me just quickly show you here. When you open up Postman, if you search for Stripe dev, you're going to see this Stripe dev uh, workspace from the Stripe team. There are different collections over here. And the last one, which is a Stripe API without any version, is the latest uh, API workspace that they have created. You can just select that and fork it locally to your own workspace. So let me show you my own workspace over here. So if I go to my own workspace, I have cloned this already. Inside of my collections, I have this as Stripe API which is actually the clone or the fork of that same API. Now, as you can see, this is going to give you all the endpoints available via the Stripe API, all the resources that you could fetch. Um, for example, prices that we were fetching uh, inside of our application. But before you uh, you'll be able to actually work with this, you need to bring in your secret key. So for that, you can just go to your Stripe account uh, and go to your uh, on the test mode, right, I'm, I'm on the test mode, you don't want to run uh, Postman requests to your live production keys. So turn the test mode on if it's not on. Go to your developer tab and under the API keys, you can see this secret key. You can bring that over in Postman. Uh, and in Postman, the easiest way to uh, put this uh, secret keys or um, API keys is to create environment variables. So you can go under environments, create a new, new environment. Mine is called Stripe environment. And inside of this, you have to have a variable called secret key and then paste in the value of your secret key under this current value. This is going to stay local inside of your Postman. Don't post it in the initial value because this is synced. Uh, with the Postman servers, you want to keep it just in the current value over here. And once you did that, you could just go back to your collections and click on this Stripe API, so outermost category that you can see here. And there is an authorization tab right there where you can just paste in this code, double curly bra braces and secret key, which points to that environment variable that you just set. And make sure that environment variable up there is also that same Stripe environment env environment. Uh, that you create it so that it reads the correct variable here so that you can uh, correctly authenticate with the API and fetch the results. So let's just test this out. If I go to, let's say, prices, just close this off, close that off. So on the prices endpoint, if you see, I if I run, uh, I haven't pasted my secret key, so let me just quickly do that and, and I'll be back. 
Okay, I copied my secret key and as you can see, I was able to fetch a list of all active prices from my Stripe account. This is the same response object that we're receiving on the client side application, but we have more control over it here, plus that we can examine what's returned from the Stripe API. But before we get there, I just wanted to quickly mention that in these endpoints defined by Stripe Postman collection, the beauty is that it, it, it is going to also give you uh, any field or query parameters that you can send to that specific resource or endpoint or based on that specific action you're taking. And if any of these parameters are required, they're going to be checked like that. So for example, if we go back to our collection on the prices, if we go to search for prices, you can see this query is already checked, which shows that this is required. But on the list, it's not, there is no required field. But for example, we can pass in that same limit that we are passing in our application. We should pass in an integer, let's say we pass two. Now it should only return two products as you can see. As you can remember, we were destructuring this data and has more property from the price object that was returned from our get server side props function. And what we're doing is we're using this has more property to decide whether or not there are more products for us to fetch. And if there aren't, we're going to return from this load more function and disable this uh, button that we have. So they're no longer, um, it no longer fires on the clicks. All we're doing then is hitting our own API endpoint and passing this as starting after query parameter, which is set to the last product ID. So let's go to that endpoint and see what's going on. So Stripe prices index. And in this endpoint, we are using Stripe uh, to connect to our account and again, fetch a list of our prices. The only difference is that now we are sending this pointer to the starting after or to the ID of the last product we got in the previous round and making Stripe to fetch the next page after that um, ID. That's all it needs uh, for you to paginate over uh, your Stripe uh, products. As I mentioned in the beginning, you can implement uh, infinite scroll. And I have a video on the channel where I explain how you can implement, uh, how you can use Intersection Observer in React to implement infinite scrolling. So therefore, instead of the user having to click on this load more button, as soon as uh, the last product is in the viewport, uh, we hit that load more function and we load more data and just uh, fetch it on the client side. Now, uh, for this homepage, we could have used get static props uh, to fetch our products and then fetch more or paginate on the client side. I'm using get server side props it depends on your use case or which one you prefer. If you want to uh, create static pages, which are faster, you can use get static uh, props. Uh, for me, I'm using get server side props and I don't have that many products. To begin with, I could have just fetched all the products and then paginate through the list of all my products inside of React State. So I didn't have to hit Stripe API uh, on the client side at all. So it depends on your use case, how many products you have and how you want to handle it in terms of uh, statically generating your sites or rendering the, rendering this on the server side. Now the next functionality that I want to talk about is, is this search functionality where it allows us to pass in a query and get responses from our uh, Stripe catalog uh, natively. If you head out to Stripe documentation for the new search API, link is in the description, you can see that the API now covers some of the top level resources in a Stripe, like charges, customers, payments, prices, products, meaning that you can natively search over these resources. Now, prior to search API, you had to either fetch a list of all of your products, for example, to kind of search for a specific one, or you had to implement a third party application and sync in your data uh, with something like Algolia to be able to search. Now it's nice to have this natively available to us at least for the most useful resources in Stripe. And the way that it works is that you would call the search method on those specific resources. For example, here we're searching for charge objects and we're passing in a query 
their uh, metadata, for example, a key equals this specific value. So you can even search for metadata or pass in metadata queries to this search API. Or for example, here, I'm searching for a customer where email equals to this specific email. Or searching for a payment intent where currency is not with this minus sign is how you negate kind of queries. Uh, it's not US dollar. Or I'm searching for an invoice or for all the invoices where the total amount is more than $1,000. Now, if you scroll down, you can read more about this uh, kind of query language that they have over here. Uh, for every query that you're passing into this search uh, method, you have a clause. A clause has three parts. There is a field, there is an operator, and a value. Uh, the field is obviously the field name. Operator can be colon, can be numeric operators, as you can see in this uh, example with the total. Or it can be a tilde sign where it is used to match for substrings when your field is a string. Again, if you scroll down, you can see there are three different field types. They're either a token or a string and a numeric field. And depending on the type of field that you have, the operators you could use changes. So if, if you're having a token or your field is a type token, you can only use the exact match, which is that colon sign. So this colon is the exact match. If your field is a string, you can use the exact match, which is the colon, or uh, for a substring, you can use the tilde sign. And if you're having a numeric value, you could use the exact match, which is the colon, or you could use numeric operators like greater than and less than. So for example, currency exactly be USD, and in the case of a numeric value, this again, you can see payments details card that last four should be one, two, three. So we're looking for payments or charges or invoices where the last four digit of the credit card was one, two, three. If you're having string or quotations inside of your strings, you have to just um, escape them. Uh, and as I mentioned already, you can also search for metadata fields, which is great. And the negation sign that we talked about, this minus, and this specific null property, for example, in, uh, in here means that we are searching for resources where the donation ID metadata field is not null. So it, it, it's present on the object. And there is, again, this reference to the syntax. You could see uh, we can also combine queries together with and and or. Uh, logical operators. So for example, if I go back to uh, our postman over here real quick to our collections, let's go to our products and hit this search endpoint. And as you can see, uh, all the necessary parameters are already there. And I can see query is already checked, meaning that we have to pass in a query. And the query clause that I'm going to send is that name, let's say includes Oh, sorry react and if I send this query you could see oh sorry it's semicolon not equal so as you can see I got a product uh, here learn react from zero to hero which is a product that I have or let's say search for learn a lot of products contain this learn so you can see we have more products now with that term inside of their name. So let's close this off. Going back to our application, the search icon opens this search command palette uh, and I have used Tailwind for this. So if you head to Tailwind, uh, there is this components library, which is called Tailwind UI from the team. And there are different already made built components there. So one of the components there is this command palette where uh, it just comes uh, let me just show you over here so inside of our components in the search uh, i'm going to explain what we're doing over here in a second but as you can see it comes in with uh, transitions already from headless ui and we have some icons uh, and the functionality is already built in there so it's pretty amazing i recommend definitely for you to check it out but all we're doing here is that Inside of this command palette, we have this 
uh, combo box input. The combo box is the combination of this box where you can search and then the results would show up. So what we're doing here inside of this input, which is that search input over there, we are um, updating our query state. So that's easy. Inside of here, we are having a state over here, uh, which is tied into this input element in our form and updates on every change. Now, I didn't want it to send a query to our backend to search for whatever it is that the user is typing on every single key input. Uh, and because of that, I am debouncing this typing or this query that I am recording with this use debounce hook. Again, there's a video on the channel about uh, debouncing uh, user interactions inside of React or Next.js uh, manually or using this use debounce hook. Uh, I'm going to link it in the card somewhere if you want to look at it. But basically this hook, what it does is that you give it a value, which is that query that we're getting from our input, and you give it a time, which is in milliseconds, of your required time to debounce this query. So all I'm doing is uh, when you're, the user is typing in here, whatever it is that they're typing, I wait a second for them to finish typing and then I'll set this debounce query. And anytime that I'm setting this debounce query or this debounce query changes, all we're doing is that we're, we're calling this search products function that we've defined over here. What this does is that it takes in that debounced query value and then hits our own endpoint, a different endpoint, this time API Stripe products search, and then passes that value as the name property, gets the products back, and then inside of this search products in our use effect, if you're having this data, we're setting our items array, which is our products array, uh, and then our combo box or our uh, command palette result is going to then loop over these items and showing them as options inside of this combo box. Let's have a look at this API endpoint and see how we're implementing the search API. So if I go to my pages, API, Stripe, products, and search, you can see we are destructuring the name out of this uh, request, and we're using the Stripe client to connect to our account and hit this search method on the product resources and pass in this query, whereby the name should be equal to this name value we destructured from our query. So this value that we passed in here, which is the value that the user actually typed in, we're going to search to see if there is any product whose name contains this value. We're going to return it here, and this data will be an array of all the products that matches that query, which uh, eventually we're setting as the item's state, which shows up as the result over here. So for example, if I search for React, we're going to see a product whose name contains this React and is case insensitive. Similarly, if I search for Next.js, we'll see uh, a product which has Next.js in its name. By the way, this Learn Next.js is a real course on my site. You can check it out. I'll include the link in the description. And that's a wrap for this video. We talked about pagination and search in Stripe API. If you have any questions, uh, hit them in the comments. I try to be as responsive as I can down there. And if you learned anything from this video, give it a like. It really helps get the content in front of more people. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.